uh, I'm Harry Colmatt Jr. I'm here for The Hat, the blog for Richmond Magazine, and I'm here with Futura, who has uh, come to our fair city, and um, just going to talk with him a little bit about how he is that he got here, and who he is, and what he did. Excellent. <laughs> Um, I did mention earlier that you'd actually seen some of our street art that's we've, I had, did. we've had this sort of renaissance. I saw like a row of piece, uh, I was like, pixel punch of, you know, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. whose work I've seen we've recently had two in events. We had the G40 and then we had the, uh, the shock, I was a, uh, a Trask and organized a, uh, an event on shock along the canal. Okay. And so they were going on at the same time. Yeah. So is this a sudden blossoming of street art. It's kind of been going on. Which like sounds with, like random for a place like Richmond, right? Well, I mean, from my point of view, I wouldn't imagine there was stuff here. Well, there's the, the, the Virginia Commonwealth University School of the Arts is here. And okay. There's people, and there's just people doing this underground, as, as you well know. Sure. And um, so it's mature. But I mean, it's, it's like one thing to have your local people, whoever they may be, but then to go beyond that and get to the point of organizing events where you're actually bringing in right. artists from it was international, huge. that's a big yeah. deal. Yeah. I, I've always cited the biggest inspiration of my life creatively, and I would even think like uh, emotionally or in some sort of like humanoid element, was the World's Fair in New York in 64, 65. That's really when I got my view of the world, you know, and, and kind of understanding like, wow, uh, I, ju I just don't live in a block in New York City in this concrete jungle. Yes, I do. However, there's this other thing going on, you know, outside of my, you know, intellectual abilities to, to comprehend, to know about, but to discover at the World's Fair as a nine-year-old, ten-year-old, it was very, very inspirational. So, mind expanding. Totally. You know, and it's funny because there's a Stella Artois commercial on, on TV right now. Right. Where they, they're back at the World's Fair. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Have you seen that one? Yes, I've seen it. And, and, and it almost like, oh my God. You know, it's like, take me back to right. what made me kind of and you know and part of my thing is like yeah I'm this famous artist whatever but I mean I'm also like a citizen of the world you know and as a result of that nine-year-old experience in Flushing so so coming up through you know Kubrick you know by 69 I was going to school and I was seeing graffiti on trains and, and, and scribbling on walls and stuff and, and, and the, the embryonic stages of what our movement was at that time and now, boom, 1979 into the new decade, we're starting this uh, street uh, kind of squatting in buildings and taking over spaces and and uh, making it like a not a livable squat, but a workable squat. And so we had this space, and, and who comes in? Keith Aaron. <laughs> Next guy, Basquiat. So, uh, Fafai Freddy, Kenny Shaw. People are still like wondering who's doing what and who are you and oh you're doing little scribbling babies. And so it was all kind of hectic and eclectic group of us. And then we start to organize and then it was probably like 1980 in fact when I paint this train on a New York City subway car that would further forever define me as this you know, abstract guy. Because part of my understanding was well, you know what, like I can't do what they do. You know, like some kids are amazing at letters, some kids are just very talented uh, illustrators. You know, you give them pen and paper, they're amazing. Uh, you give them a spray can, which is very like clumsy, and you know, most people you give it to them, they don't know what the hell to do with it. Right. But, but today, in fact, you know, some 30, 40 years later, you know, kids are technically uh, unbelievable with an with a aerosol can and, and what they can create. So. I was watching everyone work, you know, seeing work, and knowing what people were doing, and everyone was concentrating on letters, and it was all about letters and identity, and my name, my name, my name, and I was like, you know what, you guys are using great colors, and how come we can't just like take the name away, and why don't we just throw these colors around, and let's think of it as art, actually, not as vandalism, or what you guys, like, let's do something with a more premeditated thought here where it's like, you know what, no, like, I'm not just going out doing pieces, I'm going to go out and do, like, fucking painting, okay, on the side of, of a train. And the birth of street art is a direct result of the death of subway painting, because really, I mean, that abstract car I painted in 1980, um, I mean, I didn't get paid for it, okay, but, <laughs> but there was no bigger payday than seeing that train running through my city. Like I used to go to the Bronx, you know, we all have places in New York that we, we call benching, 
Mm -hmm. We sit on benches and we watch trains, right? Watch your art. Watch everyone's art. Watch yeah, anyone's art. Well, you it's never it's even know. Moving, it's moving gallery. Know. Yeah, it's moving gallery. Yeah. You never know what's coming up the line, right? Now, uh, the morning I painted the train, that brake car, I knew what side I painted it on. I knew where the front of the train was, and therefore I know later down the system what side to be on to see it come rolling up. And those, that, that year of 80, when the graffiti was on fire in New York, there was never a better feeling of watching trains go by when you saw your own work coming through. Right. Even when the public at large had no clue what was happening, because we were all like really kind of talking to each other and paying for each other. Yeah, you know, we pay for ourselves or we pay for our peer group because we want to impress them and we want them to see like the latest of whatever, you know, our technical abilities have presented. But uh, I, I missed, I mean, you know, this is close-ish to that, you know, because in fact, you know, I'm talking about a numbers crunch. Yeah, there's a lot of models with my name on it, but that week that my train was running, I had a million viewers. Right. You know what I mean? Obscure, non-knowing, right. you know, what even you're looking at viewers, but but it was running. You know, and so I think any artist, you know, Rembrandt, Picasso, you know, Schnabel, I mean it, anyone would would probably pay to have that type of exposure. You know, now, uh, Tropicana Orange Juice and, you know, whoever other brand are wrapping all of these trains now with commercial wraps right. and, and products. Or city buses. Yeah, so, so, I mean, that was actually back in the late 60s, one of my mans was like, oh, well, look at all this advertising. Like, what, we have to be confronted with that every day? Like, who's to say we can't also take public space for ourselves? You know, I love baseball, and, uh, you know, ever since I met this uh, I visited every ballpark and I documented the entire experience. So I have a I have a book that I'm trying to get produced right now called Cathedrals of the Game. Oh wow! Which is my own personal journey diary through what in fact is not 30 stadiums because that's what the MLB circuit is, but it's 32 because in 2008 we closed our two stadiums in New York, which was kind of like really like that never happens. Yeah. I started out at the Two New York stadiums that were ultimately going to close, one and two, did the other 28, and then finished with the two new stadiums now, the two New York stadiums, uh, the new Yankee Stadium, and then ultimately the new Mets Stadium, City Field. And there it is. It's a symmetrical, you know, the New York stadiums bookend. Right. These 28. Uh, yeah, 28 other venues in the middle of these four, you know, games at, at, at two New York stadiums. So that's something like no one kind of really knows about, and I'm very proud of it because it's not future of the artist, it's future of the person, yeah. future of the baseball fan. Right. And I'm trying to sell it as Leonard McGurr, which yeah. is why I have a Rizzoli deal, by the way, in 2014, and uh, late 2014. Uh, but I was trying to sell this baseball book to, you know, uh, Zoli, Tasha, and, you know, like major the publishers, big, right? The, the big guys. Yeah. And it was the like, no, no, baseball, no baseball. What about you? What about you? I want to do a book on you. And there is a future of book, but that's from 2000. So that's already like 12 years old. Yeah. And so I guess the market's like, oh, hey, we can, we can have another future of book. So I am excited about the Rizzoli book. It is coming out. Uh, it'll be great because in 2014, 2014, uh, Christmas. So okay. we got a year to work on.